is seven minutes to seven. The NHS could be short of 51,000 nurses by the year 2021, according to a report which says an existing shortfall in staff is likely to be exacerbated over the course of the Brexit transition period. The research was commissioned by the Cavendish Coalition, which is a group of 36 health and social care organisations, including the National Care Association. Nadra Ahmed is its executive chairman and co-convener of the coalition, and she's in our Tunbridge Wells studio. Good morning. Hello, good morning. How exactly do you get to that number of 51,000? Well, I think we've looked very carefully at the um, rates of vacancies across the country um, in, in the kind of hospital settings. Um, and uh, with the um, transition of people now leaving, um, not enough nurses coming through to take up posts, um, the whole uh, the whole sort of package has been put together and we've come up with that figure really which is which is the conservative estimate I think is the best way to describe it. But you mentioned the transition and this uh, this research is being presented as having a link to um, Brexit but it is correct is it not that most of the vacancies in that 51,000 are existing vacancies? They are, but 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 what will uh, what we have to remember is that um, they may be existing vacancies, but obviously over the years we have been able to bring in people um, from from uh, abroad uh, EU and non-EU countries in order to fill those vacancies. And when that sort of route is stopping or slowing down, where people are not choosing to come um, and work in the UK, obviously uh, that's when you start to see the impact of the vacancies. Yes, but, but some of that, uh, where you say stopping or you know either going back or or choosing not to come here some of that is about the economy isn't it the fact that for example the weak pound makes working in this country less attractive to absolutely come. I mean it is uh, there's no doubt about it that that does um, that does factor into it but in the past we've not had to worry about things like that even when the economy was down we would still get a, a, a throughput of people coming in um, we're not seeing that happening now uh, and and so it is a very worrying statistic and we're obviously not um, uh, in a position to have our own workforce. Uh, the indigenous population is not choosing to do that for a number of reasons, including bursaries being taken away, including you know, the policy of the, uh, of, of the, of the nation is not um, no, encouraging people to do it. There was a significant um, change of approach from the government in June when the immigration rules were, were relaxed for foreign uh, doctors and nurses, that they are going to now be excluded from the government's cap on skilled migration. That is, that is in the right direction, isn't it? It would make it easier it would, but when, you put, when you put a, but, but when you put a, a figure on it as to what that might look like, it will um, that will have an impact because you know we are we, we are we'd love to be able to be um, able to pay the amounts that are being seen as the sort of um, benchmarking. Do you and mean on the salary a, that is yes, based on, on salary, salary yeah. thresholds? And, and you know, so we have to think about social care as well. And, and, and in social care, there is no way we'll reach that threshold. So that that workforce for health and social care, which is one whole workforce and one feeds the other and we have to remember that um, you know we're talking about a workforce that that supports the most vulnerable at, at, at a time when they need it so whether it's a health uh, workforce or whether it's a social care workforce that impact is going to hit it and it will have a knock-on effect um, on, on either or whether it's health or social care Nadra.